I hope that's a decent place to put that light. I don't know. I have no clue. Let's go to the video. How's it going guys? Mark Moody here and welcome back to another episode of the vlog. You probably noticed the change in scenery here. We're actually in the office once again, just like we were last Saturday. I decided that if we were gonna do another sit down talking video, it's probably best to you know change up the scenery. So uh, here we are. So I mentioned in yesterday's video that I have a wedding that I have to go to today over in Frederick, Maryland. And I probably have about maybe like, so I have about two hours until I've gotta be out there. I've just been getting stuff packed, I've been getting some gear organized, batteries charged, Ronin's charged, different things of the like. And as I was picking out the lenses that I wanted to take with me, I decided, you know, maybe this is a great opportunity for me to make a video about my favorite wedding lens. This is gonna sound terrible, but you would probably think that, you know, with everything else that I've got in my arsenal for filming things and for taking pictures that I probably would have the most expensive high-end stuff. Not really. Uh, I've been trying to work myself out of that and trying to, you know, just get the things that I need, not the most expensive, most lavish equipment, but rather the things that will get the job done and really that's it. And that brings us to one of my favorite lenses, if not probably my most favorite lens to use for wedding videography. So all the way back in May when I was getting ready to go out to St. Michael's and do that second wedding of 2019, I realized that I didn't have a solid standard zoom lens in my kit. I had the 16 to 35, the 70 to 200, which were my only zoom lenses, and then a couple of prime lenses, which were more tight rather than wide prime lenses and didn't really give me a whole bunch of flexibility. I needed a different lens. I needed a lens that I wasn't gonna have to constantly take on and off of my camera. I needed something reliable, something I could stick with and something I could use throughout a good portion of the day up until the reception. And because I shoot Canon, because I'm shooting on a full frame camera, there's plenty of standard zoom lenses out there that I could use. I didn't wanna buy just some run of the mill third party lens. I kind of wanted to get a piece of Canon glass. So maybe that's where the high-end bougie-ness kind of comes in, I guess. So I narrowed my decision down to two different lenses, either the Canon 24 to 105 F4 IS or the Canon 24 to 70 F2.8, which both of them are great lenses. They're fantastic lenses. The colors are great. They're both sharp. They're both just stunning pieces of equipment to use. Now the 24 to 70 F2.8 is a great lens. It's really nice, it's sharp, does great in low light. It's got phenomenal sharpness. There are so many great things about that lens. It's almost hard not to want to have that lens. And it's a fairly common lens. Most photographers and some videographers will choose that lens over other lenses because it's so versatile. And in my personal opinion, it's a very limited lens. Yes, it is a 2.8 lens, so it'll do great in low light, but at the same time, the fact that it's expensive, it's really heavy, it's a big lens, so it takes up a lot of space. Filters can be quite expensive. Now, it's a very tempting piece of glass that you'll wanna have, but I did not really need, nor did I want that lens. So, I decided to go with the 24 to 105 F4 IS Mark II Canon lens, and here is why. Number one, the price. This lens will probably run you about a little over a thousand, maybe 1200 bucks new, but that's like with a warranty and everything, I'm pretty sure. So right off the bat, it's not that expensive. Number two, it's a 24 to 105 lens. It covers a lot more distance than the 24 to 70. Number three, it's not as big, not as bulky, not as heavy. Number four, the big kicker, it's got image stabilization in it, which is an absolute dream. If you're shooting video handheld, it's great. If you're shooting video on a gimbal, it's even better. I can tell you right now for a fact that the 24 to 70 F2.8 does not have image stabilization, but this puppy does, and it is great. Especially if you're shooting video, especially if you're shooting handheld video, which I've come to actually take a big liking to. And furthermore, if you're shooting with a camera that doesn't have image stabilization, image stabilization is still gonna be great to have. This lens got it, so it's phenomenal. The IS is phenomenal. Right out of the camera, using this lens for video, everything looks great. Wide open at f4, the bokeh is pretty decent on this lens. It's not like the super buttery gooiness or whatever that most photographers dream of, but it's enough to pull your subject out of the background and it's enough to have a really nice and very professional look in my opinion. One of the sort of drawbacks in my opinion for this lens is yes, it's f4. It's not an f2.8, so yeah, the bokeh is not gonna be great. So with bokeh not really being part of the issue here, it's more so how it does in low light. This lens, isn't fantastic in low light, but it does 
good enough in low light, especially using this lens on a mirrorless camera and with the great low light capabilities of mirrorless cameras, F4 is almost not really a problem. So I bought this lens for the price, the size, the IS, just the focal range, colors, everything. It's a really great, well-rounded lens. Way back when, when I was starting out in photography and getting more and more serious about it, I used to own a 24 to 105. And then eventually when I bought my 16 to 35, I really didn't need it anymore. And then I decided to sell the 24 to 105 and I used that money to buy my first Ronin. And then finally, when I did buy this lens, this lens has basically turned into my gold star in my wedding kit. It stays on my camera throughout most of the day, throughout the ceremony, throughout the private little couple shots that I like to shoot. Shout out to Jake Weisler for the inspiration on those. Not saying that the 24 to 70 isn't a great lens, but in my opinion, if I had to really pick between the two, this lens just definitely takes the cake. Now going back to not having to have the most expensive, the most you know lavish gear ever, yeah, this is a Canon L lens, but really this is probably one of the most affordable Canon L lenses out there. And sure, it's not an F2.8, sure it's not you know the latest and greatest technology, but this lens does exactly what I need it to do. And really at the end of the day, that's what's more important than having the latest and greatest and most expensive technology. So with that being said, that is all the time in the world that I have. I really just wanted to make this quick video here. I've been meaning to make this video for a while, believe it or not. And uh, I figured, hey, I'm heading out to a wedding. This is my main wedding lens. Why not make a video about it? So now I wanna hear what you guys think. Did you like this video? Do you have this lens? Are you interested in maybe getting into wedding videography or maybe photography? This is not a bad lens for that either. I wanna know what you think. And with that being said, now that's it for this video. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you all enjoyed this one. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye bye. It's the money, it's, it's the money, it's, it's the money, yeah.